Alright, what is up everybody? ZWZTV, Zonicus, Man, Double Z's Man, whatever. So, I thought I did a video about r slash anti work, and I thought I'd do another one to cover a few more posts and everything, especially because I've got like a few tabs open for what I want to discuss today, as well as because of what I saw right here. This stands out because I got a bit of my own story involving my job as well, involving this topic. Part of the problem with U.S. work culture is its obsession with punishment. You have managers writing up adults as if they're school children, which is BS to begin with. Management constantly sending out scolding emails or documents warning their employees of their various things. It's like the idea of the original sin. Management approaches employees from day one as if they're a problem to be managed. This headline easily stands out because... I saw stuff like this in a bit of a way when I first started my job starting in 2013. Very same job that just recently made me work 10 days in a row. We're not getting a full four days off despite the fact that it's a holiday time because of the customer. But it's like I remember this right when I started because there are two different things that really stood out. One of them, there was this guy named Isaac who I know is no longer with the company. I know him as, I pretty much refer to him as the write em up guy, because anytime he ever gave us a meeting, whether it be in the break room or lunchroom area, all I ever heard come out of his mouth is, if I catch you doing, insert, insert whatever thing or whatever he's not happy about, I'm writing you up. Catch you doing this, I'm writing you up. Catch you doing that, I'm writing you up. It's like, dude. Is that like your, I don't know what his official job description or title was. All I knew him of is a write him up guy because that's all I ever heard coming out of his mouth. Can't you doing this? I'm writing up. It's like, good lord, dude. And it's like, even when I first started the job, there are times where I would do a little thing and then somebody says, oh, you get written up for that. Or you get written up for that. Or this or that. Like, I remember I had a cardboard box and I just dropped it in the trash can and some guy immediately was like, oh, you get written up for that. I remember I snapped him like, is there anything you can't get written up for in this company? I'm like, good lord. There's always threats of getting in trouble. You can write up for this and that. It's like, you're not motivating your employees to work hard if you're constantly threatening them with punishment. You're just going to make them feel like they're walking on eggshells and being nervous all the damn time. It's like, you're going to get to the point where they're not going to care and they're going to wish to be punished just to get out of the job if you're just constantly threatening them at every turn. Especially here in the U.S. because that's just rampant. Anyway, let's go over some of the other articles here that I got opened up. Interviewer stood me up. Uh, let's see. Scheduled an interview. Hi there. Can't wait to hear from you. Saying, did not hear from you at all today. I made sure I was free from work. Da -da -da. If you still want me employed for employment, expect another time frame and apology. Oh. The schedule for an interview did not hear about it all for a substitute teaching job. Wow. Dude, that is just utter horseshit. To the big degree. Let's go to article number three. Written up for changing a double A battery. Okay, I gotta see this. I used to work at a well known microphone company. Microphones are for recording studios as well as other applications. While I had a BA, bachelor's, get something about being a bachelor's associate's degree, music technology, I still accepted the $11 an hour. Oh, boy. So my field I wanted to move. Normally I only do 10 an hour, but they gave me an extra dollar for my experience. This. Dude, that's another thing that's frustrating. It's like you work hard for your degree, and yet they still give you low pay. It's like. You've busted your ass off and paying extra money to still keep going to college. You should still be able to get a good wage because chances are a lot of your money is going to go back to paying you off your college debt. Anyway, let's continue. We're going to train my way up to being able to test and QC these microphones pretty heavy. Although I had to take a second job driving a Zamboni to pay the bills. Exactly, that's what I was just referring to with the degree. At one point, I found a flaw in their testing of thousands of microphones. Basically, our machine was passing bad product because the cable being used stopped working was still getting us a positive reading. Nick's a suggestion moving forward about involving flipping the phase of the testing mic, blah blah blah, save them a ton of money and meet with the owner and get praise for my work, and lets me know they are impressed and glad that someone works here in the stu- uh, that works here is into audio. Rad! Fast forward a week before reviews for raises, 25 cents if I'm lucky. Jesus, that's bad. 
Zest to test these high-end mics using the little battery-operated testing device. You start to realize the thing doesn't power up, so I replace the AAA battery. Mention this in passing to our production manager, he freaks out. Placing the battery or calibrates that device, you're really screwed up. What? To preface this, the only microphone our production manager has ever used, the only one they, they take your order with, at the drive-thru. Oh, boy. Wonder he's not even sure if that's true after a little detective work. Determine that it's the little watch battery that recalibrates the device. Uh, let's see, a few days later I get called in the production manager's office to get written up for changing the battery. Battery that no one knew if it would recalibrate the device ended up not affecting anything at all. First of all, we found out together that it was totally fine to change the battery. Secondly, if it's so important in the process they deemed getting written up for, don't you think it's enough important enough to train me on in, on in the first place? Not like that at all. Did not like that. So never would have signed the paper. Cease to deny me the raise. Thing a battery mishap. Mm. Something in my tongue. <laughs> Nearly put in my two weeks. Stunned. Even that. Even kept them from giving me vacation pay. Wanted out before Christmas, so I technically only gave them eleven days notice. Couldn't move there. I was getting the review of my exit interview about him to HR. It was driving me... Yeah. Good lord. It's like companies will find... Like I said... Like we just saw in the other one. There's always companies finding any reason to punish people. Like, that's freaking stupid. Minos found that what he did had no problem, yet they still punish him. Like, screw that. Next one. I got... This is one of the last five that I'll bring in for today's video. The company was trying to force my PTO, pay time off. Last year in the middle of the pandemic, my company started telling us we needed to use at least 15 of our 23 days before the end of September. I had plans in December, and I had already asked for a week in July for some relaxation and the rest between October and December. My manager would be losing money if I couldn't use those days. He told me he would fight for me. It would be weird if, a com if my company did that, I mean... The company I'm at, I've used my paid time off like maybe two, three days total this year. Because honestly, I don't have a life outside of work, so the only reason I ever use my time off is if I'm just taking my birthday off, because I have no plans for the rest of the year. That's <laughs> that's not fun. A few weeks later, it comes by saying I need to use 15 days before the end of August. I told him I'd stu I'd studying, I could move some days, trying to find a compromise between both parts. Later, I told him I could use five days more without losing money. So, and I would so, and I would so would as a personal favor. A little weird there. Near August, came and told me we need to talk about my PTO, taking into account some emails he'd received about upper management. I knew what was coming. Now they're requiring us to use 85% of our days before the end of August. They're threatening us with choosing the days on laterally. Oh, unilaterally. If we don't do it voluntarily, well, oh, great. During August, he came. Oh, sorry about that. That was when I said enough is enough. I got my contract and read it fully, searching for any kind of clause. Ah, uh, the, the uh, lawyer route allowed them this right. Not finding such clause, went to hire, went higher to our convention, searched at any clause again without luck. Finally, I went to the highest legal reference, read the statutes of workers. Which is a document that defines the basic rights of workers in Spain. Oh, so we got somebody from across, from a different country here. There I found an article saying P that PTO were an agreement between company and worker. So both parts not reach an agreement, then it would be resolved judicially. So I came to the meeting with my contract, the convention, and the statutes. And when they tried, the tried to <laughs> threaten, the conversation went like this. Them. If you don't pick more days, HR will do it for you. Me. And how are they doing it? What power do they have? Them. I don't know about it, but the legal department told us they could. Well, according to our contract, convention, and statutes, you have no such power. Instead, according to Article 17.2 of the statutes, is agreement between both parties. We can, and if we reach not an agreement, it will be resolved judicially. Oh, so again, it's, oh, Spain, so that made me where there's some errors there, why that was a little hard, weird to read. Then we're getting whiter for the for moments and could no answer. Me? Well, are you going to take me to trial? Well, no, I would never do that. Talk with HR to fight for you. <laughs> never talking about it again. Well, this year they tried. Told them my PTO is already in the database and getting all on December. Got a problem with it? No, we tried to defy it. 
Definitely gotta know your rights, folks. Getting that enough right there. Good move there. Alright. Fourth to the last article. Was late to work due to manager fuck up. Went off of my manager over it. Nice. So we're a popular pizza chain. Many for drivers are actually damn good and I enjoyed the job. So on Monday, while I was working, I snapped to pick my schedule. It was supposed to be at 4.30 on Tuesday. Unknowns to me, my schedule was changed after I left to 11 to 7. Oh boy. Until I get a text that I was supposed to be in three hours ago and I show up, I'm obviously pissed. Manager just didn't get it. Telling me I wasn't in trouble, it's okay. Won't get written up, etc. Well, I think the guy, even with no punishment, the guy still has every right to be mad that you're texting him saying that he's late when you guys change the schedule from under his nose. Finally kind of snapped and I said, I don't give a shit if I get written up or if you're mad. I'm mad. I do have a life outside of this place and I have shit to do. Joke is like that. It's what happens when your schedule gets messed up. It can really affect your personal life. No shit with the manager or any of them, to be honest, but I know damn well when, well, they're hurting for drivers, so tired of the sphere they try to instill about workplace discipline. <laughs> Just like we said at the beginning, that it's automatically assumed my mood is due to being afraid of discipline. Feels damn good to be in a position where I, they need me more than I need them. It's just like they... I've seen even posts on here about people getting their schedule just changed from under their nose and screwing up. It's like... If you're going to have your schedule... If you're going to have the schedule set for people, make sure it is set in stone at least a few days in advance. Like, even my company has done this to me just recently with the overtime schedule. Because usually they have it set like two days in advance. So, like, Wednesday night slash Thursday morning, we know what the overtime schedule is. And it's like, it was like, I think either last week or the week before, no, it was a week before, we, no, it was last week. I, I, it's been a long couple weeks, folks. It said on a third Wednesday night that in my area, it would only work first shift, so third shift would have the full weekend off. And then the next day, they completely change it on the Thursday night slash Friday morning schedule saying, oh, everybody on third shift is mandatory. And then we find out, then I see that first shift didn't work in my area at all. So it's like, what in the world? We could have had a full weekend off and said they throw everything around. It's like, my area, my shift is the only one in my area that have been working on our work area every freaking work day. The other shifts, it's just whenever. Like, depending on, like, other areas and everything. So it's like, the pressure is being put on us and put on our back. Like, come on. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Got fired because I told the manager that someone offered me the same job at, with a higher wage. Yeah, I've heard stories like this where they find out you get a new job, so they fire you because, oh, you're not loyal to the company. They did the same thing on an episode of Friends where, right towards the end of the series, Rachel had an interview at a restaurant to get a new job, and her b current boss was there at the same, right near there, and overheard the freaking interview. She tried to weasel around it to make sure that it's not known that she's getting an interview, so she doesn't get the new job she's applying for and she loses her current job. And it's because, oh, she's not a team player. Let's see this. Working as someone who rings on people's houses and advertises something. Don't know if that's a term for that. Well, it's kind of like a telemarketer or something like that. Last week I was working when a car stopped and the guy in it asked me what I was doing. I told it and he asked how much the company pays for. I told him, living here an hour. Oh, boy. Said I'd work for him, pay me tw pay me more, twelve sixty. I mean, that's not much, but yeah, better than nothing. So they got that offer, and he responded that I'm fired. Although I wrote him, I'd still work for him because I didn't know if the other company he said he wants to fire me anyway. What in the world? Today I met with the guy that he tried to hire me. And he told me the manager called him and complained, offering me a higher payment is unfair competition. <sighs> Does he not know how competition works? Like, seriously, the competition is all about freaking being, like, a threat to somebody else. McDonald's and Burger King are competition to each other. Freaking Lowe's and Home Depot are competition with each other. They're in generally the same field, and they have differences to where they are a threat to each other. I mean, obviously, this freaking person offering more money means he is a competitor, is competition. So there's nothing comp unfair about it. Like, bloody hell. Alright, let's go to the second last post. 
First time I'd ever quit. I know I am worth what I'm worth. Don't ever give up your holidays for a corporation. Leaving them high and dry for Black Friday tomorrow. To post. All right, let's see the first one. Hi, Steven. It's blank. Wanted to let you know my holiday schedule. I'm living on my own for the first time, so I'll be visiting family November 25th to the 27th. December, I'll be flying home to Chicago for uh, from the 21st to third or 23rd to 31st. 21st. Mention this to someone at Macy's. I forget who. They told me to tell you. All right. So a week later goes by. Hello, it's blank. I checked my schedule and it says I will be working on the 26th to 27th. I will be flying to Chicago. We'll be getting back Saturday night. Won't be able to come in Friday and Saturday. Wrote these days down on availability sheet. I handed in when I was hired. Sorry for the inconvenience. All right, the next one for the response. That's great news. We'll come in tomorrow. Fly to Chicago tomorrow morning for Thanksgiving. Wow. Person's out of touch. Honestly, I don't think this is a great fit for me at blank. i multiple people since I was first hired here and they wouldn't be available for this Thanksgiving season. My original availability card that I turned in on the first day. I'm sorry, but I can't work at blank. Well, it's clear what you mean because you accidentally didn't flag it out with it. We look at this holiday season, it's sort of a waste of time. Thank you for the opportunity. Somebody just doesn't get it. You're out of touch. I'm out of time. Thank you, Holland Notes, for that song there. Alright, let's get to the last post here, folks. Boss is pissed I blocked them from my personal Twitter. Hey, comrades, my boss has made opaque comments criticizing my personal Twitter account before. Found out today she was blocked and emailed me at Asking, this was some sort of mistake. <laughs> clearly not. My account has no link to work, and she doesn't follow me, so clearly actively checking up on me. It'll be enough for about six months since I blocked her. I said I blocked all my colleagues to maintain a personal slash professional boundary, but she's yet to reply. What are we thinking? Any advice? <laughs> Don't freaking give in to her demands. That's the right move. I even have the company that I work for blocked on Twitter as a precaution. Because I clearly do not want them freaking peeking around on my social media or anything like that. I don't even have my supervisor on my freaking Facebook list. I got some people from work, some of my colleagues on my friends list, but not that many. Because <laughs> it's like, you don't want them trying to freaking snoop around and find some reason to freaking use something against you. So, you're smart on this. You're very smart on this. This is like, if the person's snooping around, that means they're clearly looking for a reason to freaking use anything you post on social media against you to get you in trouble. So, good move blocking them so that they can't try to freaking weaponize against you. But anyway, that's going to sell it for today, folks. Let me know what you all done in the comment section below. Hopefully, you all are enjoying your Thanksgiving time away. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for listening, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out.